we've got some additional questions, and I think this one can be for both of you. One is, does the cytomite disease matter in terms of long-term success? And the second one would be, do locations of initial, initial stage four progression that were never in the brain help predict future treatments in any manner? I mean, I, I personally think um, that, you know, visceral mats, meaning to the liver um, and to other sites, are probably portend a worse prognosis. Um, I know patients with bone-only metastases who've led an incredibly long um, um, life after diagnosis. And so I think at the end of the day, as we collect more real-world data, as well as data on study, we'll be able to really get to the heart of the matter about those uh, different uh, possibilities. But I think, as I said, the visceral, meaning the, the, the internal organ mets are a little bit more dangerous uh, in terms of outcomes. Yeah, and I, I, this comes to mind when I'm thinking about how aggressive to be about consolidative therapy or treatment for a limited metastatic disease. Um, you know, two sites that I feel most optimistic about when I'm doing this are actually the adrenal glands, which lung cancer often will spread to as an isolated site. So I'll be very aggressive managing those if you have one adrenal metastasis. The other site, which is counterintuitive, is actually to the brain. If you have just one site of CNS spread, sometimes that really is the only site of spread. That's another type of disease where we'll often be quite aggressive treating you know, your, your lung disease as, as if it were just lung disease, maybe with chemo radiation or surgery, and also treating that one spot of brain disease with radiation. And patients hear a brain metastasis, and of course, they worry because it sounds like a bad area of spread, but actually it can be some of the best outcomes in terms of limited spread. Yeah, that's great points. You know, when I remember reviewing the Keynote 24 data with the long-term survivors in the immunotherapy trials with pdl one high expression, there weren't really any clinical factors that really predicted people who were going to be the long-term survivors. So I definitely think that um, additional research is needed to really define um, the answer to that question in terms of, you know, the long-term survivor and long-term success. I think that's a great question. And certainly we're seeing, you know, better therapies, both in radiation as well as immunotherapy and targeted therapies. So a lot of room for optimism.